Well, according to the newspapers this morning, Boris Johnson's radical plan for solving Britain's reliance upon gas from elsewhere is to relax planning permission on wind farms near you. So if you don't want one on the, well, of these, I guess, steel cement and behemoths towering near your home, blighting the English countryside, it's tough, folks. Because interestingly enough, you can see, you can oppose planning permission and you can object to works near you removed and have them removed in an instant when it comes to these other forms of energy, like fracking, like nuclear. But when it comes to wind, you're not going to get a choice. You might not even be asked. So I want to ask you, why only allow one form of energy to be built in Britain? Why don't we allow the market to decide instead of politicians trying to centrally plan the economy like a Soviet with a five-year plan? I agree that we need energy security. Believe me, you'll, have, you'll find no stronger an ally on that point. But I don't agree with our methods of obtaining it. When governments tried to get us to drive diesel cars, we were told later that they were poisoning our environment. When we were burning so-called renewable wood pellets, we chopped down forests and burnt the wood, which eventually led to emitting more CO2 than the coal we'd actually rushed to replace it with. And of course, we failed to invest in nuclear thanks to the Green Extremes campaigns against it, which has seen France much more protected from the rise in cost of wholesale energy than we here in Britain. So governments have made a hell of a lot of mistakes, in my view, in this very area. And I say, get out of the way. Allow the market to decide what the best course of action is. If that's these new green technologies, brilliant. But until that's ready, until they come galloping down the hill like a knight on a valiant steed, we need gas. But all we're getting from this government, I'm afraid, is hot air. And the energy price cap, far from shielding consumers from the brute force of market competition, has actually destroyed any competition whatsoever. If you were with one of the smaller energy, energy companies, there's a high chance, statistically speaking, that your energy company has gone under. It's competition folks that drive standards and lowers prices. You know, imagine Aldi against Tesco. You're seeing a price war between the two of them. So now, only, the only energy companies that exist are the bigger ones. They've survived. And instead of getting used to price rises as they come, we now have to face massive steep increases every six months when the energy price cap is raised by the regulator. What we need is greater competition and greater suppliers a greater number of those suppliers in the energy mix. Now, folks, you might be bored, Richard, hearing about energy and taxes, and here's a real-world example of why I actually think that that should matter to everyone. If you take your local chippy, for example, right, you might occasionally enjoy a chippy tea. How many of us have relied on our local when we get in from work and can it be bothered to get ourselves in the kitchen? Well, folks, because life in Britain is now so expensive, many of them might not make it through this year. Overheads have soared massively. We're seeing council tax shoot up. We're seeing VAT on food go back up. And of course, the cost of electricity and fuel increasing the transportation of fish, potatoes and those large fly fryers that are used in our great British chippies. And I don't know about you, but I look around my local area, and as much as I love the North East, I look around and I think, my God, why am I paying some of the largest council tax rates in the country? I'll be all right, right? I live on my own. But what about Arthur and Martha down the road trying to get by on their pension? Or a young couple trying to start a family? Or a small business owner, might well be a chippy, with a small business acting as the backbone of the British economy? We risk losing so much more than pence and pound.